Confucianism is more of a philosophy of a way of life than an actual religion. It was started by, na by a man named Kung Fu Zhu, which means Grand Master Kung. In English, his name is translated to Confucius. Confucius was born in 551 BCE in the state of Lu. This is the present-day Shantung province located in eastern China. He was born into poverty and as a result had to do many petty jobs to help earn a living for his family. While he was a teenager, Confucius was very bright. He mastered the skills of ritual, archery, music, the chariot, calligraphy, and arithmetic. This helped him move up in the government. He hoped to become a ruler or have some power, but this dream was never fully accomplished. He was appointed Minister of Public Works and Crime by the King Ding of Lu. He tried to teach the king his values, but the king was enraptured by riches. In a self-imposed exile, although some say he was forced out, Confucius left his post and began to travel the region, spreading his word and looking for employment. He gave advice to the rulers of the Chinese provinces, trying to teach them peace. He suffered many dangers and almost died numerous times. He re returned home to his home in Lu, where he spent the last five years of his life writing down his teachings. He also taught from here, gathering disciples around him. He died in 479 BCE. His disciples continued to spread his word after his death. Confucianism and most of the texts of Confucius were very close to extinction under the Qin dynasty. All of his texts were to be destroyed during this time. Any followers trying to hide the books or continue teaching were killed, some being burned alive. The religion did survive through this region and began to flourish again under the Han Dynasty. A Confucian scholar named Dong Zongshu persuaded the Han Empire to adopt Confucianism and bring it back to China. Buddhism was also introduced during this period. Confucianism and Buddhism shared some central beliefs. Buddhism and Taoism began to threaten Confucianism after the Han Dynasty. Confucianism began a revival during the later Tang Dynasty and in the Song Dynasty. A poet and essayist named Han Yu was influential in this process. He spoke out against Buddhism and Taoism, say they went against the old principles of Confucianism. This period of resistance against Buddhism and Taoism is, now, is known as Neo-Confucianism. The most influential person during this period was Zhu Xi, a philosopher. His system was based on one created by Jing Yi and Jing Yao, and switched education from the five classics to the four books. He helped interpret the texts of Confucianism and explain them. Beginning in the 20th century, Confucianism's influence has decreased considerably. It is now separated from public education. Many people see Confucianism as a thing of the past that they should be aware of, but not to practice anymore. Of the followers left, many have weaved some Western philosophy with the religion. This is called contemporary Confucianism. As recently as China's Cultural Revolution, which lasted from 1966 to 1976, Confucianism has been rejected by the government. Leaders of the religion lost their credibility and were even removed from the political parties. Later, Confucianism was allowed back to, into China again and has some influence now. It, there are five beliefs in Confucianism. One is, all humanity is good and always strive to be better, be loyal, and live upright. Number two, the focus is on comprehensive truth rather than logic. They feel the more comprehensive, the closer it is to the truth. Three, Confucianists put an emphasis on sympathizing over others when they are suffering. They are always searching for a higher sense of sympathy for people. 4. This belief system also entails the belief that the ultimate personal harmony in life are the relationships that one has with ruler to subject, parent to child, husband to wife, older to younger, and friend to friend. Nothing to do with a relationship with God. No relationship unless it is within human existence. 5. They do believe in heaven, but they call it Tian, but that it is silent. There are two different sets of texts that Confucianism followers followed over the years. The first was Si Shu, which are the four books. The first one is Lun Yu, the Analects of Confucius. The second, Cheng Yang, the Doctrine of the Mean. The third is Ta Hu Su, the Great Learning. And the fourth was Meng Zhu, which are the writings of Meng Zhu, a philosopher 
who traveled from state to state conversing with rulers. The other set was the Wu Jing, or the Five Classics. And the first book here was Shu Jing, which is classic of history. Shi Jing, classic of odes, poems, and songs. Ai Jing, classics of changes. Zhun Shi, spring and autumn annals. And Li Jing, classic of rites. One symbol of Confucianism was the yin yang, which meant harmony. There was also another symbol, special to Confucianism, meaning total harmony, righteousness in your own life and in your relations with your neighbor. The Jin meant social virtue, and the Li means collect behavior, good manners, worship, and politeness. Role of Women in Confucianism Women at any level were to occupy a position lower than men. They accepted subservience of women to men as natural and proper. A woman's honor and power were as a mother and mother-in-law within a family. There was literature written to teach women about self-discipline, etiquette, relationships, household management, humanity, and chastity. Mencius was a very important figure in Confucianism. He was a student of Confucius and related to him. He was usually considered the most famous of all the disciples. He focused most of his time on government and politics. His t teachings were often very controversial, and his books were often banned. Another character in Confucianism is Zingzi. He also was a student of Confucius. He is believed to have written Daxu, a classic in the religion. It has become a sacred text in Confucianism of Confucius on September 28th for his birth. This is also recognized as Teacher's Day. On this day, followers gather at the ancient home of Confucius in Khufu. The people recognize the modern values of Confucianism and spread understanding of the ancient philosopher's thoughts. There are two parts of the ceremony. First, youth will read from the Analects of Confucius. People then hold memorial services on this day to honor how his teachings have influenced the Chinese culture and culture all around the world. Birth The Tai Shin spirit of the fetus protects the expectant mother and deals harshly with anyone who harasses the mother to be a special procedure is followed when the placenta is disposed of the mother is given a special diet and is allowed rest for a month after delivery the mother's family of origin supplies all the items required by the baby on the first fourth and twelfth monthly anniversary of the birth having a child especially a boy is very important so that the family name can be carried on when the boy when the baby is born a party will be given for extended family and friends to announce the newborn and celebrate it. After the baby is born, it is the family's responsibility to take care of the mother, to reward her contribution. At the party, egg is served as a symbol of life and the noodle as a symbol of longevity. The longer the noodle, the better. Marriage takes place in six stages. Stage 1, the proposal. The couple exchange the eight characters, the year, month, day, and hour of each of their births. If any unpropitious event occurs within the bride-to-be's family during the next three days, then the woman is believed to have rejected the proposal. Stage 2. Engagement After the wedding day is chosen, the bride announces the wedding with invitations and a gift of cookies made in the shape of the moon. Stage 3. Dowry This is carried to the groom's home in a solemn, solemn procession. The bride price is then sent to the bride by the groom's parents. Gifts by the groom to the bride equal in value to the dowry or sent to her. Stage 4. Procession. The groom visits the bride's home and brings her back to his place with much fanfare. Stage 5. Marriage and reception. The couple recite their vows, honoring heaven, earth, ancestors, and their parents with family and friends as witnesses. They then toast each other with wine and take center stage at a banquet. Stage 6 is the morning after. The bride serves breakfast to the groom's parents, who then reciprocate. Death. At death, relatives cry out loud to inform the neighbors. The family starts mourning and puts on clothes made of a coarse material. The corpse is washed and placed in a coffin. Mourners bring incense and money to offset the cost of the funeral. Food and significant objects of the deceased are placed into the coffin. A Buddhist or Taoist priest performs a burial ritual. Friends and family follow the coffin to the cemetery, along with the willow branch, which symbolizes the soul of the person who has died. The latter is carried back to the family altar, where it is used to install the spirit of the deceased. Liturgies are performed on the 7th, 9th, 
and 49th day after the burial and on the 